A lot Thank of you. respect between Best these thing. two. We heard that in the John interviews Higgins earlier. But now it's down to business. It's been a mixed week, hasn't it, for John Higgins? He made his thousandth century last week in Brentwood, but ended the week, of course, being relegated from the top 16 for the first time since 1995. Extraordinary 29-year spell. Can get back in, of course, immediately this week if he goes deep in this tournament. But the draw, the FA Cup draw, has uh, thrown up a clash with Sean Murphy. Of course, he's played some really good stuff. He was runner-up in Shanghai this season. Semis in Saudi. Clearly feeling good about his game again. A lot of history between them. It is John Higgins who just shades the head-to-head. -head. 12 wins to nine. Maybe all the talk, because there's been talk about the top 16 position for sort of the last year, really. He nearly dropped out after the Crucible, Higgins. Maybe now that it's actually happened, it takes a bit of pressure off him. Just concentrate on playing. We saw Neil Robertson, of course, he dropped out and has just got back in. Yeah, so first blood to Sean Murphy. Terrific long red. And of course, like the world champion, he just departed the scene. Brilliant with the rest. Shouldn't be a problem with this one. Been playing well, hasn't he, Sean? You know, having a good season. Threatened it. Couple of big events. All into Judd and stuff, but yeah, looks back to something like his best. Never been the most consistent Seven. player of the top players. But when he's good, he's, well, all pretty much unplayable, even for his fellow top players. And he's playing very nicely this season. Sean will well, well remember the first time these two played in the British Open. It was in the semi-finals 20 years ago now, 2004. So Murphy was still very early in his career. It was his first semi-final in a ranking event. And he got absolutely battered. Well, Higgins, 6-0. John Higgins, a string of big breaks. But a few months later, 15. Sean Murphy became world champion. Sixteen. Just took a slight pause, not happy with the cue ball. Hmm. Sean Murphy, sixteen. A little nod of the head, almost like, yeah, that old chestnut looking good, getting in and losing the cue ball. That's a worry player of his capabilities. That was a golden chance. One. And just on John, I don't think it's betraying too much confidence that I had a chat with him last week after he lost to Mark Allen and missed a straightforward pink, let's be honest, in the last frame when set to perhaps win it, but he did say, I went in and had a chat with him, and he said, uh, again, it's not betraying confidence, he said, there's good times ahead, so he's happy with 
his equipment, as the guys were saying in the studio, new piece of wood, but no problem in that score. Hasn't quite worked out. It's already eight. A kind of feeling about this match, isn't it? It feels like a big match. Still the last 32 stage, but these two are, of course, real big hitters. In fact, it's the last 64 stage, so it's even earlier in the event. Quite hard to follow, actually, this tournament, which round we're in. But yeah, there's Higgins, so much history between them, and, and regardless of Higgins' form has slightly tailed off, he's only slightly, I mean, in that match with Mark Allen last week, went to a decider. Just the odd shot here and there that maybe he's going wrong at vital times. If he can put that right, of course, he can still win titles. That was shown all over, wasn't it? Not bailing out with his cue ball back to bulk, anything like that. Total aggression. So he kind of... He's super aggressive, prepared to go out on his shield. More so than most other top players. Half chance for John. Have a gamble with his cue ball, mind you. Ah, played it with check to get the good cue ball. See, that's kind of one difference with these two players. John obviously has a more balanced game, more percentage. One. Just kind of always fancy him for these. It was not Big easy ball. at all, but he's been queuing so well this season. You saw it the other night here against Ian Burns on this table. And now he's Out. gone straight in off. Sean Murphy won. John Higgins six. He's absolutely bewildered by the path the cue ball's taken. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, it was obviously oh. off straight. Obviously. That pink. So, it's either the cue ball that's puzzling him or perhaps his own cue because we know he he does switch. And he certainly switched last week during a match, didn't he? Cues, that is. Yeah. A right old puzzler, that one, for Sean. One. Yeah, he's expecting the cue ball to come back nearer his cue where you see it there and not flirt with the uh, middle pocket. Well, still Higgins is knocked in a good long red, so second real good scoring opportunity for the four times world champion. Again, though, <laughs> the cannon's not worked out. Eight. Touching ball. Already a bit head shaking, isn't there, between these two? As I say, both bang up for it, taking Ooh. each other on. And the winner could play Neil Robertson, who. He's still waiting to see who he plays tonight. Rory Thor's 3-2 up on Mark Joyce. So Robertson plays the winner of that one. And then, if he gets through, plays the winner of this one. John Higgins, eight.
Danger Lurkin, mid table there, loose red. Here's the left middle pocket. In John's mind, it's a good cue ball. That's the thing, isn't it? When you play those safety shots, you're just never quite sure where the Reds can finish. Decent chance. Kind of feeling that they're almost trying too hard at the moment in these early stages. It feels like a sort of deciding frame. The match will settle down, I'm sure. It's almost like they're really desperate to, to sort of lay down an early marker against the other player. Certainly interested in something. Distance, but... Yeah, now we've got to pick out what it is. Oh, well, obviously, it's the plant. It's what we can get. Can't get through, so playing the swerve. How does he get on a colour, though? Even if he gets the plant. Yeah, that was the problem. Yeah, now the problem is he's left Higgins in for a, a third scoring opportunity. <laughs> Dave Gilbert has just beaten Ben Wollaston 4 1. He seems to have played some good stuff there, Gilbert. that Higgins is four times world champion. He's also four times British Open champion, so that's a record he shares with Stephen Hendry. If he actually wins this match, he will have won more matches than anyone in the history of this tournament. First won it back in 95, when he was still a teenager. And, of course, next year he turns 50, so that underlines the longevity of John Higgins. Six. It's been at this three-way rivalry, of course, with Ronnie O'Sullivan and Mark Williams, his contemporaries, and feels in the last year they've had the upper hand, but there's been times when he's certainly been top dog of the three. And of course, he's the only one left in this event. Ronnie O'Sullivan didn't play on Monday and Mark Williams was beaten. I mean, he has an easy red to right corner that's probably 
the easier shot, but he obviously wants the black in play, so that's why he's trying to get rid of this red this time round. Seven. Oh, that's a gem of a little kiss there. Dead straight blue. The rest isn't his favourite implement to use, but shouldn't be a problem. Key shot well, this. This is a massive shot. It looks quite innocent. Just running across the top face of the black. Thirteen. You get my drift because <laughs> another three or four inches it would have been hampered, but this is now a decent chance to get frame one. He is, I think, at a very interesting stage of his career because his game has not gone far from it. He can still play to a very high level. It's just we've seen a few matches, haven't we, in the last couple of years where just at a crucial time there's been a mistake has crept in where, you know, in years gone by it wouldn't have done. And 21. mentally he's found that quite difficult to deal with. A few close matches for once weren't closed out, but then at the Crucible he made that incredible clearance, didn't he, against Mark Allen? One of the great clearances in the World Championship to win a match. So whether it's an issue maybe with concentration or whatever, if he can solve that, then 28. he's still going to be a major, major threat for, for some years to come. Twenty-nine. This little shot John's about to play is where he's enjoying this cue. It's gone from a 9.8 millimeter wide barrel. To 9.5. And look at the grab on the cue ball there. That's what it's given him this piece of wood again. Want to betray his confidence in, in that, but uh, 36. that's what he's enjoying. He feels like he's getting more bite on the cue ball. But it's a bit thinner. Yeah, a few more revs on the cue ball because of that. Thirty-seven. So as I say, it's those little shots where you're just playing them with backspin just to hold the cue ball where he's getting some of the benefit 38 yeah. nothing you could do about that 42 just had to play the natural angle so not over the line No, it's been that sort of frame, hasn't it? But he's got himself into a good lead here. 47, as you see, with 51 on. 49. The thing that will never <laughs> leave Higgins. John Higgins is 49. he always knows what the right shot is. He's got that knowledge. I'll be with him for life. <laughs> gem of safety shot by Sean. It was a bit risky, but now that he's got the cover, John is snookered. Going to have to swerve this. Dangerous looking table still, so 
For a foolish contact on this red. Well played. Very fortunate there, John. Complete miss hit. <laughs> Got to go. One. Needs high value. The black's still on, but only just. Yeah, he might even just have a pass at the double on the pink. Well, as you say, he's got to get this, otherwise he needs a snooker. We cut it. Thank you. Sean Murphy, one. Sean Higgins, one of the great closer downers of frames. You know, if he's in front and snooker needed, hard to wrest it from his hands. Foul. Sean Murphy foul. And yet, they are the penalty points. So, 42 in it now, 43 on. safe which doesn't help him or safer than it was and he's left a pot at the red and if it goes in it's surely Higgins is frame Murphy had a few chances early on the cue ball was sort of going into places he wasn't expecting including the middle pocket at one point
yeah, even there, John was kind of circling the wagons, wasn't he? It's a, a wee bit of defensive play in that attempt at red. I mean, he played it with a lot of pace, so... Cushion first, send the red. Yeah. Needs a bit of help. Does it cut back to middle? Yeah, I'm amazed he didn't play cushion first there, because it kills the cue ball stone dead near that bulk cushion. That match I mentioned between Rory Thor and Mark Joyce has just gone 3 3. Joyce has won the sixth frame, so. And to start a decider, 3 1 still Sonia Carney over Anthony Kowalski. And they're on the colours in the next. And Jamie Clark, Ricky Walden is the match. We'll be starting in a few minutes on table two. Ever since I said how good he was at closing down frames, he's barely done anything right, Higgins. John might try and get the cue ball tight in behind the black. Send the red in a little journey up table. Difficult to get it, but there's no risk. The red looks like it will pass the blue. Or does it? Does. Yeah, there we go, no problem. So this red to... ...button up frame one. And off the black. Ooh, one. Bonus time. Well, it sort of sums the frame up in a way, this. <laughs> but it looks like it's ended it. 30 minutes. As I say, I think it's a question here in the early stages of the fact they're playing each other. A lot of respect was shown. They're both really desperate Eight. to play well because they fear they have to. I'm sure it will settle down.
John Higgins, eight. Murphy, and a frame. Nods his head. So, as I say, quite a scrappy frame of snooker, but it's gone to Scotland's John Higgins, the four times British Open champion, leads Sean Murphy, 1 0. Day three in Cheltenham. Sonia Carney has beaten Anthony Kowalski out on table four. And knowing Sonny, he'll be heading now to the practice table because that's you. where he seems to spend his time when he's not Second playing. Frame. But good win for him. Nice to see Sean him back Murphy on tour after a couple of years. Here, John Higgins leads Sean Murphy 1 0 after a half hour opener. Two reds together there. He needs the right one of the two. See that? Because then he can't leave one. All right, there's, he's left a double. Sean wants it. Dangerous game to play against Sean, leaving this red on. I know it's massively high tariff. It's kind of shot, this. Oh, that was a good shot, wasn't it? That's a, knowing the trade is a good, bad one. So, whether John did deliberately gamble, it's paid off. Six. Those last two shots will please John. Seven. Especially the blue in and out of bulk. He got the revs that I was kind of hinting at. The cue ball grabbed halfway towards the bulk cushion more than normal. Even got a little sense of it just there. And that's what, as I say, Fourteen. he kind of likes about what he can do with this new cue. There's nothing better than it working in a big match. Fifteen. Yes, because... For Mark Williams, it was the opposite, wasn't it? He struggled with his. He says he's in the club now, practising with it. Let's hope he comes good with it. But experiment hasn't worked yet for him. It's interesting, though. They're all still looking for something. I mean, Ronnie O'Sullivan, the other Class of 92 member, you know, was playing left-handed. He was try trying something new after all these years. 
trying to find something. It won't always work, but at least they're looking. It shows you they're determined to find something to help them keep this incredible longevity. Yeah, good point, Dave, but it also keeps the enthusiasm. John, actually, again, he, he was telling me that the other day. They kind of enjoyed it. It gives you a reason to get on the practice table rather than the same old, same old. Yeah, he wasn't so happy with that last shot, so a little tester here with the rest. Twenty-three. You'll never truly master this game because it's so hard, but Higgins and Ronnie and Mark have become closer than most to doing that. It's a trouble with that new chalk, isn't it? When you when you drop it, it's round, it rolls away. Okay, now, can he find a nice cannon? There, just got the wrong one. 30. <coughs> John Higgins, 30. Sean just allowing the referee to Thank you. do his duty and check that he can see a red full ball, which he can. Yeah, the referee from Poland, Radoslav Matuszak. One. Smattering of applause, fully justified. That was a corker. Good chance now. Sixteen. Yeah, something John does, he doesn't need the mini butt to, to reach this. He just likes to have an extra three or four ounces of weight through the shot. And perhaps 17. because of the extra few ounces, he just overcooked the cue ball, so... He's going to be busy continuing the break. Straight pink's no good. Blue likewise. Yeah, 
send the brake. He's just going to push a collar to the side cushion. Higgins, 17. John Higgins fall. Ridiculous rule, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it obviously has to go back. It's an easy hit. So something similar. Just checking if that bottom red would be on. <coughs> Make full ball con contact on the loose one. Thank you. One he's got to be careful with. Knows it looks innocent, but usually leave one. And there you go, far red, far corner. There's a possibility for John. That's where the absolute masters of the dark arts see those little things. I'm not saying, you know, Sean sees pretty much everything out there, but an innocent looking escape, but there was danger all over it. Now, if this red goes in, all things being equal, it'd be 2 0. One. Yeah, I know that since the English Open last week, Sean Murphy went to see the Back to the Future musical in London, and I think right now he wants to turn the clock back to the start of this match because it's been really a bit of a shocker from him so far compared to how well he played in the first round against Ian Burns. The long ones aren't going in. He's struggling with the cue ball. His safety hasn't been to scratch either. But that's uh, Higgins sort of not getting the little cannons or they're not coming off as he's hoping they would. Six. He's on top, though, and he wants to stay there in this match. You can see Murphy struggling. Higgins, six. Thank you, Sean. Sean. Yeah, he was waiting for the referee just to, to mm. check the line. Arms out wide, bewildered at the way the cue ball reacted. Whether it's the cue, the tip, the ferrule, or he thinks it's the cloth or whatever, he's a bit mystified as to what's going on today. Yeah, I mean, for someone who loves playing so much and particularly playing big matches, he looks thoroughly fed up, doesn't he? John Murphy, very unusual.
for John, that is a shocker. <clears throat> Especially given that Sean has been totally off it today. That is a gift. I'm not saying Sean's going to win the frame off or anything like that, but he shouldn't have this half chance. <clears throat> Well, this could be maybe the start of the match for him because look at that pot success down at 47%. I know it's early, but it's got to vastly improve. But it hasn't there. One. Yeah, one of those days, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh, not so bad for John, riding this pink disappears, because it should be frame over. Good pot. Seven. Eight. It's not vintage chickens, but he's playing the better of the two for sure and must sense an opportunity now. He'll have picked up, of course, Murphy's body language. Sat with his arms folded. Not enjoying this at all. And n as nice a man as John is, when he's out there playing, you can forget all about 14. that. He's trying to find the road back, of course, to the top 16. 15. Dropping out for now has made very little difference, but going forward this season, of course, he wants to be seeded at the UK Championship. He wants to be at the Masters eventually doesn't want to be going through qualifying for the World Championship. To avoid all of that, he needs to get back in the elite group, the top 16. 21. Twenty-two. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. I mean, he's got a great record in most tournaments, but this event, he's won it four 36. times. He's been runner-up on one occasion. He's got to the semis on another occasion, four quarter-finals as well. 37. Made a maximum in the event three years ago when it returned to the calendar. Forty-four. Well, that's way past the point where he's won the frame. It's important to pop these balls, isn't it? Just make Murphy sit there and watch. Pile on the misery for him. That's all part of it. Brings the brown out. Forty-nine.
52. Fifty-six. Sixty-one. Sixty-seven. A lovely break, actually, this. And this has really settled Higgins down. Murphy not settled, though. So John Higgins, so two nil up. Friend, but John really Higgins feels like he's on top. Then we're going to have to dramatically improve for Sean Murphy as he trails two nil. Not happy. It's two nil to John Higgins. Sean Murphy uh, between frames got a different cue out of his case. So he's hoping the one he's got now he will fare better with. He can't really fare much worse, can he? Top per break of 16, pot success 44%, long potting 29%. These are stats that need to improve. There's still time for that as we wait for John Higgins. But this is what he's going to be using now. Ricky Walden, I can tell you, is 1-0 up against Jamie Clark on table two. That's live on ITVX. Still 3-3, Rory Thor and Mark Joyce. There is table two. There's Ricky. You can never miss him in an arena, can you? Very imposing figure. And Hamad Mir, you might remember last year, beat Judd Trump in this. He's on table four, just starting out first frame with Ben Mertens from Belgium. So ITVX for Walden Clark, but good right frame. now John Higgins and after Higgins that to break. really good 74 clearance, <coughs> he's going to get frame three underway. Well, there's a pretty telling stat, isn't it? 30 minutes since Sean Murphy potted a ball. He's had a few chances in that time. Problems as well, I mean, and it's unusual for Murphy because he's got a great temperament, but he is rattled. You can see it in him. We watch him between frames. So even a chance like that that wasn't straightforward, maybe just didn't feel as sort of calm on it as he normally would. To say Higgins, in all his fast experience, will certainly be aware of how his opponent's feeling.
John Higgins, one. Yeah, even the best players always try to evolve, but just thinking about John, if there's one aspect of his game that hasn't translated into the modern game, is maybe the power that a lot of players have these days, and, and also from bulk. He's never been known as a devastating long potter. And that's why, you see, here he is again, he's just been like a spider spinning a web, just waiting around and playing a kind of nothing safety shot, cue ball back onto the cushion and wait on his opponent, sort of diving in and taking a risk. And it's worked again. It's, it's something that John would never talk about. He didn't want to let on. <laughs> Keep these things a secret, but that's the way that he plays in the modern game. It's not the Murphy way, we know that. Everyone's different. But he's still effective. He just needs to get a bit of confidence when he gets his chances. Again, for no good reason, Six. really. See, the lack of power, or the way that he doesn't, but you know the red left of the black there? He easily could have played as a right-hander on that red, play it with pace, open up the bunch, and he's got pink and blue waiting. But it's not the Higgins way. And even there, he played that with a bit of touch. He didn't play to power six. it in. Well, that clock will continue to tick, of course, slash pot time until he knocks one in. Of course, it's, <laughs> it's typically it's sort of landed a bit awkward. Yeah, could have done with something easier, couldn't he? Well, there's the pot success. I mean, look at Murphy, 33%. Now, it, it's only frame three, but he's taken on 21 pots and he's only got seven. So he has attempted a fair few.
don't think he can play to far corner, but will he be tempted on the cut to left middle? Goes without saying it would be a massive risk. It's middle. Big shot this. Got to get something going here, Sean, because the match is slowly kind of drifting away from him. One. <laughs> yeah, a rather ironic celebration. Well, in a way, that's a good sign. That suggests his mood is sort of holding up despite his struggles. So let's see now, because it's only one pot, it's a good one, but let's see if that leads to anything. And this is where mental strength really is important. And Sean Murphy is on that score going to rate very highly always because he's got such enthusiasm apart from anything else for the sport. Six. Seven. Again, he's not happy with his cue ball. He's just left it a little close to this cushion. A time when he wants to be nicely on the next pot. Thirteen. Good contact, 18. but it's funny when you're struggling, the game seems to test you exactly the way you don't want to. This cut back red is blind, it's tricky, it's risky. No guarantee of being on a colour either. Got to get this. Nineteen. Pink no good. It's going to be the long blue to keep things going. Scores scrolling. This is a big shot though for Murphy. You fancy him normally with these. Yeah, well, that'll make him feel good. Still just sort of chasing this break though, isn't he? The cue ball's not quite far. Sort of obeying his command in terms of where it's finishing. Murphy, yeah, he was left with that cut back and it's not there. So what was a promising start and a break he did well to keep going has come to a rather premature end.
six. Seven. All right, John's going to be busy winning the frame at this visit, but just the fact he's going to get the pink back in its spot, that's it's actually quite a really nice chance, this. With the skills these guys have, and John in particular, the red by the black's not going to be a problem. Thirteen. Fourteen. I know it's an easy shot. This is the one where John feels he's getting the cue ball to sit quicker. More revs on it. It's pretty straightforward. Just keep an eye on the cue ball holding. Yeah, quickly it, it kind of grabbed there. That was nice. Twenty. It's difficult to see, you know, the naked eye, but it. It does make a difference, so plenty of work to do, but it's at the front. Twenty one. That's a lovely shot because he's just going to try and play a brush cannon. On the top side of the black if he wants to. 27. Just to release the red. <laughs> 28. Really didn't have to, so... He's taking these nicely, though, hasn't he? Good cue ball. Thirty-four. Chop the red out this time. Thirty-five. Okay. Not the worst. You know, greedy, you want the red out and the cue ball. You can't have it all sometimes, but this could be the payoff. Pressure in the black. 42. Pink has made this decision for him. That extra insurance. That's why John's playing this. Dead weight. But he knows that in all probability he won't lose the frame if it doesn't disappear, the red. But it's virtual frame ball, isn't it? Big shot. Thank 
Bradford. Yeah, he's potting the crunch balls, Higgins, in this match. This break has not been straightforward. With the 43. rest, as you can see, eight out of eight. So a check of the scores. The black to lead by 33. So a red and a good size colour. You won't need the last red on the book cushion. Sean Murphy changed his cue prior to this frame, but his fortunes 50. have not changed. He was in briefly, increased his highest break to 24 before missing that red to the green pocket. 51. Six. John Higgins, 56. Yeah, absolute granite. No thoughts of trying to pot that red. Just keep Murphy bang in trouble. <laughs> Clearance from Ricky Walden to go tunnel up against Jamie Clark. Mark Joyce is playing for a snooker on table three in the decider on the brown. That break, uh, frame's been going 49 minutes. He needs a snooker on the brown against Rory Thorpe. Ben Merton's 1 0 up on Hamad Mir. Yeah, even here, John will tread carefully. He doesn't want to leave the red near pink or black, anything like that. I don't want to give Sean any encouragement to see that. Even the cross double-double, so to speak, just to get the red away from the black so that Sean can bring the black into play.
even here, I think you'll see John, if he can play the pot, he's going to be mindful of the pink. Golden rule, don't move it, just leave it where it is. See that? Miss the pot thick, you can't move the pink. Yeah, top of the table. Keeping the red and open play, you just never know. Not an absolute cinch hit. Again, there won't be lots of pace in this. No problem. something similar again and behind Brown with the cue ball it's a half chance looks a natural yeah, too thick They have a good backstory, or a nice backstory, these two, like a, a lot of the top players do. I wouldn't say close off the table, but I remember Dave mentioned the first meeting in 04, and it was around that time Sean went up to John's home and stayed for a couple of days, went to the club, and no doubt got taught a lesson <laughs> how to play the game. And uh, it was nice for Sean, because got to see John and at home and you know a nice house nice car all that sort of stuff and Sean wanted that for himself yeah and also from Higgins's perspective what a what a gesture really you know it's not in his interest to try and bring through the young players but it's a way of himself keeping sharp taking on Players coming through. Yeah, the, all the top players are good that way. I mean, so many stories you hear about. If any young player comes on the tour, and I mean any, if they were to ask John or Sean or yeah, these top players, it, any chance I could come over and have a game one day, please? That would be, yeah, no problem. You know, you would think, nah, that they, they'll not play. Yeah, no problem at all. All good that way. Murphy was furious with the, the way the last shot turned out, but he was fortunate to cover the red, at least, with the yellow. 39 behind. So, one four-point snooker, but that's, of course, a red and a black. The pink's nailed to the cushion, so... Green safe as well. It's not looking too rosy for him one way or another, although this could be a snooker. Yep, tap on the table from Higgins. 
Murphy's given a lot of advice, hasn't he, to Stan Moody, who's still in this tournament, beat Michael Holt yesterday. I can tell you that uh, Rory Thor has finally won that decider against Mark Joyce. So he's playing Neil Robertson tonight, so we've got Thor against the Thunder from down under. It could be a stormy evening. Yeah, tap by Johnny. He, he always appreciates a, a class shot, which that was. Now, this is a difficult hit. I don't know what odds you would lay in this. Probably 60 40 against, something like that. And again, oh, Fine. show oh. Murphy four. Yeah, so working his socks off to get the four point penalty. Now he's got it. I'm going to try and get the red black with it. Well, it's 11 minutes actually of, of toil to get the points. No double kiss on. Just send the red onto the bolt cushion. something of a result there, John, because it's difficult for Sean to bring the pink into play. And here's a chance to wrap the frame up once and for all. Yeah, he's had to try and keep his discipline. He did give away the four points, but makes a big difference if the red goes in, of course, be 36 in front without a colour, 27 on. One. Let's have a look at the blue. Which completely slam the door in Murphy's face. So different cue for Murphy but same result as in the previous two frames six highest break just 24 for sure Murphy this afternoon pot success at 50% numbers you don't certainly don't normally associate with him eight John Higgins, eight. And the front of the head from Sean Murphy, a 34 minute frame. He did get the four penalty points, but John Higgins has taken it. He's one away from victory at 3 0. <laughs> 
Welcome back to day three of the Unibet British Open here in Cheltenham. I mentioned at the start that they first played in this event 20 years ago in the semi-finals, and it was a whitewash then to Higgins 6-0. Very different sort of match. That was all breaks. This has been more disjointed. To break. But it could be Thank you. the same heavy scoreline. Unless Murphy can find something soon. Thank you. Yeah, and just a report, Sean has gone back to the queue that he started the match with. Did change in between frames there. Oh, no miss. Sean Murphy, six. <laughs> Slight adjustment made. Always seem likely to get the, the bunch on the second attempt. It'd be the most John Higgins thing ever, wouldn't it, for him to win this tournament, just get back in the top 16, and it's like last week never happened. He's made so many sort of unlikely recoveries. But he needs results, and obviously this would be a massive one against one of the players of the season if he can get it done. Decision made. He's taken the aggressive option. Oh. It was the only way he could pretty much <laughs> miss it. Was it was one of those where he probably was aiming for jaw because he's expecting if it goes a little wide. It'll flick the other red and disappear. Now then, Sean. We can get something going. One. Yeah, 25 minutes, although, of course, most of that, he, was, he wasn't trying to pot anything. He was uh, playing for snookers. But anyway, this is where he wants to be now, around this black spot. I think he's a player, it doesn't take him long for his body language to transform if he's suddenly feeling good again. And we know Eight. he's got a great sort of stomp around the arena when he's feeling like his game is there. He spent a lot of the afternoon looking concerned in his seat, looking bemused at times. Nine. Just a 16. word on Ricky Walden, he's going 3-0 up over the line in that third frame against Jamie Clark. 17. Of course, some of the first round matches were played in Leicester a few weeks ago, so we've seen some players sort of new today, even though <laughs> other players have played a couple of times. It um, can be quite hard to follow what's going on, but Ricky Walden looking good to reach the last 32. Twenty-four. 
25. Yeah, still early days and any potential comeback. But... Three or four good shots in this contribution into the reds then. Fourth black. Oh, lovely. Thirty-two. Well, <laughs> he's been struggling all afternoon. Imagine if he did actually make a one-four-seven. It would just come out of nowhere, wouldn't it? But he's good enough. We're asking a lot there. He wants to win the frame first and foremost, and just get going again. Thirty-three. He made a unique one, didn't he, last season at the shootout, of course, against the clock in that rather rowdy atmosphere as it was in Swansea against young Bulchu Rivers. It's an event where audience participation is encouraged, and as he was on the blue, <laughs> three pots away, someone shouted out, don't Four. bottle it now, Sean. Just what you want to hear. Forty-one. Maximums are becoming obviously D8. more frequent as the years go by, and it's almost got to the stage where. You can identify very early in a break because top players almost to a player will any sort of half chat. We saw Judd the other day, didn't we, with a attempt at his thousandth century trying to do a maximum when he gave up a straightforward red to middle going up for blue. They tend to have a go whenever the opportunity presents itself, and I've no doubt Sean will here. He's made eight in his career, and there have 56. been eight in the history of the British Open. Yeah, it's just gone a bit wrong. He's just got to control this cue ball here. Yeah, gone wrong. 57. It's just the wrong side of... Yeah, well, he was the right side of the straight, but just a bit thin and tried to be cute with his cue ball. 63 at this level. Doesn't get the job done, as we know. Not with John in the other chair. Black ball. Shall on the disappointment of the field maximum attempt. That was excellent. Cue ball there just ran enough to make this extremely difficult. If it had stopped and he was queuing out of the middle of the, the corner pocket there, you'd really fancy it, but this is awkward. Great shot. One. Yeah, terrific. This is more like it from Sean Murphy, and there's still time in this match. First things first, put this frame away. This red should do that. Seven. Eight. Fifty-six. 
15. Sixteen. Yeah, just on the queue business, I'll, I'll say two things. The first thing is that Sean knows better than I do what his needs are in terms of a queue. But the other thing I would say is, because he's just a fabulous snooker player, if I was his, you know, his best buddy and whatever, practice partner, coach, whatever, they just play with AQ. You don't need to switch around, not in my opinion because you're an unbelievably talented player. 31. Just a good enough cue that hits the ball properly. 32. And he's back with the one that he did start the match with, and this has been excellent, hasn't it? 39. Forty. Sometimes I guess we can look for things or you know, pro maybe a problem that's not there. You know, when you look at his ball striking, <laughs> he doesn't normally have too many problems. But he's back in this match. And a frame. Yeah, that's more like it. Still in trouble, but a much better frame from Sean Murphy. So he now trails 3-1. So the match continues, and Sean Murphy fans will uh, be a bit more chipper, as indeed will the man himself after that last frame, which in the end he dominated. He breaks a 57 and 40. He was on in the early throws of a maximum, but anyway, he's got the Thank frame you. one. Frame five. John Higgins to break. Ben Mertens, a young Belgian player, promising rising star, turning up on Hamed Mir. I mentioned earlier that Mir beat uh, Judd Trump here last year. That was just before Trump's incredible run of three tournaments in a row. Ricky Walden 3 0 over Jamie Clark, and David Grace and Lewis Uller underway on table three in the opening frame there. David Grace beat Jack Lazowski, didn't he, in the qualifying? So Jack, obviously, a local man, not here, as Murphy knocks that one in. And the signs one. are improving all the time here for Sean Murphy. Of course, it was Lazowski that beat him here last year. Made that great clearance, didn't in the decider. John Higgins is sitting this chair eyeballing Sean and the reason I say that is 11. I've spoken to John about Sean's game quite a few times down the years. And he, like 12. pretty much everyone else, is acutely aware of the capabilities that Sean has. If he slips into gear, he can be a frightening player to play against. So John will be ultra wary 19. of what might be on the way. 20.
yeah, Murphy has great pride in performance. You know, before the match, he always speaks well. He always looks immaculate. And, of course, he always wants to play to a high level, not just for himself, but for the audience watching. Certainly at 3-0. I mean, he wasn't enjoying it, but he wasn't just going to give up meekly. 28. Yeah, it's that power thing that is different, completely different from the way that John plays. I mean, what an asset to have. And all of a sudden, he looks interested as far as maybe, I know it's a long way away, winning this match. John looks mildly concerned. For good reason. <laughs> Sean can take any player apart at any time. 35. And John will know that. He won't be sitting in any way thinking, oh, Sean's having an off day. I've got a good run at him here. No, no, no. Thirty-six. Yeah, I interviewed Ronnie O'Sullivan in Riyadh, the Saudi tournament, and I, I asked him, "Do you ever feel in a match you, you, that you've got a player?" And he said, "Absolutely not." He said, "The game for that cannot afford to think that." And I'm sure Higgins didn't at three nil. <laughs> Certainly won't be feeling it now as Murphy starts to just look more comfortable. Yes, actors and talk about stage presence, don't they? Sean's certainly got that in a snooker sense. Gets up ahead of steam. He simply bulldoze his way through matches. Well, it was that time at the Crucible, Corin Wilson, he, he lost him, didn't he, in the semis and said that he thought Sean was a bit theatrical. Well, they were playing at the Crucible Theatre. <laughs> he was literally on the stage. But, yeah, that presence is uh, definitely an asset. 42. Fifty-one. Fifty-eight. He's kind of going along at a simmer at the moment, Sean, isn't he? You know, there's nothing rushed about it. 59. As he continues, and hopefully from his point of view, continues into the next frame, if there is one. Gets that bit quicker all the time, and that's where the intimidation factor can start setting in. 64. Red colour red. To take us to frame six. 65. Just the blue, but the frame's all but done. Seventy. In a different context, we saw on Sunday night 71. in the English Open final the way that great players can be frozen out. Neil Robertson was by who is it? Who nearly turned it round from seven one eight two down. This is a shorter match, but Higgins was dominant to 3-0. But for two frames now, he's not potted a ball. You can't, sat there, however good you are. 78. 79. The applause is for Ricky Walden. Great win for him, 4-0 over Jamie Clark on table two.
looking to make the cannon to... 84. Go on and make the century May 18 this season. Just behind Judd Trump. So, so now the 84 it's and the interesting, French. isn't it? Two really good frames from Sean Murphy and 84 in that one. And Higgins' 3-0 lead is now just 3-2. Here in Cheltenham, and this uh, latest match on the main table not done yet. It was 3 0 to John Higgins. It's now 3 2. We're just waiting for the two players to return. So, this is what's happening. We've seen, of course, victory on this table already for Karen Wilson over Dwayne Jones. Dave Gilbert beat Ben Wollaston. Ricky Walden's just beaten Jamie Clark. And Rory Thor beat Mark Joyce to take on Neil Robertson tonight. Sonia Carney back on tour from Thailand defeated uh, Poland's Anthony Kowalski. 4-1, and in the, the latest scores, still first frame, David Grace and Lewis Uller. Of course, he was the late call-up when Ronnie O'Sullivan withdrew on Monday. And Ben Mertens, he was 2 up on Hamad Mir. Mir's won the third frame there. So, uh, a lot to keep on top of, and of course, plenty more matches tonight. We've got Mark Selby on the main table. Can he win an ITV event, Mark Selby? We'll find out. He was in runner-up last year, wasn't he, to Mark Williams? I'm sure he really loves us bringing that up every time he plays. Anyway, he'll be up against Yuan Sejun. And Neil Robertson follows against Rory Thor, of course, on this table as well. And lovely venue, this, the Centaur. It's right in the uh, middle of Cheltenham Racecourse. Lovely part of the world and uh, nice to see so many people have come out. The weather for the rest of the week isn't great, but they were here Monday, weren't they, when it was absolutely bucketing it down. So I'm sure it'll be well attended. It's nicely established here now in Cheltenham. John Higgins, of course, has won tournaments in all sorts of places. In fact, the finally lost in this tournament was down in Plymouth, wasn't it, to Nigel Bond, who uh, got a snooker on the last red, one on the black. Incredible conclusion. But, as I say, he's won it four times. He won the last one before it was discontinued in 2004. That was down in Brighton. John Murphy just making him wait here. He's going to be back any moment, but he comes back, of course, feeling... So much better than at 3-0 when watching him in the chair, he was just uh, bemused, annoyed, all of that. That's all been put to one side. Seems he's forgotten about all the Q business as well. He's just playing now and he's playing well. Thank you. Take your seats, please. Frame six, Sean Murphy to break. So it's 3-2 to Higgins, but he's not potted a ball in the last two frames. Sean Murphy's made breaks of 57, a 40 and an 84.
That was a super shot with lots of check siding behind that wide target. Well, blue and yellow. You don't get all that many taps on the table from John, but when you do, you, you know you've played a good shot. Tends not to tap the table for... Well, it doesn't come to the table when someone knocks in a long red, but you know what I mean. You know, it's when someone plays a good escape or a tactical shot. Touching ball. He sees everything. <clears throat> Top of the table from John. You've earned it. Now, this should be straightforward. Just drop on yellow-blue for the cue ball. Yeah, no problem. Might not be a bad thing if John can see one of the reds, but... Hmm. Bit of an impasse here, because John's not going to take any risks. He doesn't have to. Ooh, is this a chance? He has to pot the red. What can he do with it? Not much. One. Well, he's known as the magician, but uh, that key wall had stopped. It wasn't going to be moving again. Brown ball. Sean Murphy won. Yeah, good tip, but John has this red near a strike corner. His right arm will feel a wee bit cold at the moment, so this is a tough one. Yeah, it's suddenly 25 minutes since Higgins has actually potted a ball. Murphy, of course, was frozen out a couple of times earlier. One. High black off the spot with a shot. That's his line. Perfect. Well played. Four. Five. It's one of these matches now. It feels like it would be a better win for Higgins if he could get the job done here. The fact that Murphy has come to life because people then couldn't say, well, Murphy just had a, a shocker. He was struggling earlier on. He hasn't struggled the last two frames. Eleven. 
12. Case. Key shot now. Right at the bottom of the cluster. Choose to play this probably punchy. And two cushions. Nineteen. Back for green, spreading reds. Oh, what a piece of ball striking that was, but... Twenty. Managed to get any sort of reverse side, as we call it in the trade. So, decent split. But he's getting out of the woods just yet. Needs a good shot with the rest. He's out of eight, don't attempt fight, but it's not missed with this bit of equipment yet. <coughs> Thing is though, every shot is different and the context of every shot is different. And that was a big one, really. This stage, Murphy coming back at him. 23. That's as good a shot as he's played in the match, actually. And I know he's mildly hampered, but it precious little to do with the cue ball. So if this red goes in, it's a bona fide chance to win frame and match. 24. This is where he's faltered in the last two or three years. I hate saying it, but it's a fact, isn't it? On the verge of victory. What mistake creeping into his game? How does he handle this one? 21. Yeah, oddly enough, I think a lot of the sort of... Uh... 31. Balls he's missed at key moments have been the easier ones, haven't they? You know, he's, he, that's the thing. He, he seems to pop the crunch ones, and then maybe the concentration dips or, or something happens. That's what he's got to really guard against. Thirty-two. Oh, that was a gorgeous shot, you know because he didn't actually want to play blue there. He, he wanted yellow, because then it doesn't interfere with his cue ball. I think, yeah, yellow's going to be his shot. And it's, well, it's straightforward to get nice on the two reds nearest to pink. Under normal circumstances down the years, this job would be a good one. You've still got to do it. Couldn't wish, wish for a better chance. This is what the 42. practice is for. To get yourself in the position to put away a fellow top player. See the plant there? That's a certainty as well, if he wants it. 43.
50. Fifty one. Well, this has been a very impressive break. Fifty eight. Not least because of the way Murphy started to pile the pressure on two. Balls away from victory, John Higgins. Fifty-nine. And it'll surely be satisfying for him that he's killed it off at the first time of asking in this frame. I suspect it won't be a record he'll care about. Maybe no one else will either, but he's now won more matches than anyone 66. in the history of the British Open. It just underlines his longevity, 67. his achievements, his contribution to this sport. Anyone out there who wants to write off John Higgins, you've not been paying attention these last 30 years. Because inevitably, when the chips are down, he comes good. He's out of the top 16. He can get back in within a matter of days with a deep run here in Cheltenham. And he's going to be through 75. to the last 32. Yeah, and it's the manner of the way that he's ultimately put this match to bed that will please him no I end, no century, but no matter. Friend and a match. A really good finish, 82. There's been so many meetings between these two, but this one has gone the way of John Higgins. The four times British Open champion prevails over Sean Murphy by four frames to two.